Can you go to the hospital by yourself? I promise, I'll take care of everything. My name is Emily, and I'm about to have a baby for the first time. I'm last month's pregnant. Although I'm nervous, I'm also very happy to be adding to our family. My husband Mark works a desk job and has weekends off, but he doesn't help much at home or with shopping. He often visits his parents' house on weekends because they live close by and he's very close to them. He doesn't really have a reason, he just goes. Since I got pregnant, I've been careful not to lift heavy things. When I need to buy something heavy like rice, my friends help me. Every day, I wake up early to make breakfast for Mark and say goodbye when he leaves for work. Then I clean the house, do laundry, and go shopping if I need to. After I come back, I start making dinner. Once everything is done, I can relax. I'm on maternity leave now, so I've started a new hobby, blogging. I write about my day and post pictures of things like my food, the blue sky, and flowers in my garden. My friends and people I know leave comments, and this has become a fun part of my day. One evening, while I was making dinner, Mark came home. He left his bag and jacket on the sofa, so I picked them up and hung them up. I told him I made hamburgers for dinner and that I was going to take a bath. He just went to the bathroom without saying much. We've been married for four years, but he's not very kind or thoughtful. I sometimes wonder if this is normal for marriage, but I've gotten used to it. After his bath, I gave Mark a drink. He asked where the beer was, looking at the bar. I said I forgot to buy it and would get some tomorrow. He got angry and told me to go to the store right now. I was upset. Why did he expect his pregnant wife to go out for him? If he wanted it so badly, he could have gone himself. It's difficult for me to walk around with my big belly. He got even more upset and yelled at me, saying it was my fault for forgetting and that being pregnant doesn't mean I get treated differently. He believes staying active is good for health. Because he doesn't calm down easily, I decided to go to the store anyway. At the store, I ran into Sandra, a neighbor. She was in a good mood, which made me feel a bit better. I told her about my husband wanting beer and not understanding why he couldn't get it himself. Sandra seemed to sympathize with my situation. After chatting, we went our separate ways. When I got back, Mark was just sitting there, not having cleaned up after dinner. He asked why I took so long and demanded the beer. His harsh words hurt me, but I gave him the beer and started cleaning without saying anything. I couldn't believe he could be so unkind, especially now. I didn't want to argue, so I kept quiet, had my bath, and went to bed. The next morning, Mark acted like nothing happened. He doesn't hold on to things like I do. He noticed I was upset and told me to be nicer since he was going to work. He talked about the importance of being grateful, which made me want to point out he should practice what he preaches, but I was too shocked to say anything. I just watched him leave, saying he wouldn't be home for dinner. After he left, I went about my day as usual, but his words stayed with me. I decided to make something simple just for myself. Then, as evening approached and I was about to eat alone, I was surprised by Mark's unexpected return. I hurried to greet him. He thanked me but mentioned his surprise visit was due to his plans being cancelled. He was hungry, expecting dinner, but I had only prepared enough for myself. Mark's reaction was immediate and filled with frustration. He couldn't believe I hadn't considered the possibility of his return, expecting a meal waiting for him. His disappointment grew when he saw the modest dinner I had set out for myself, questioning the effort and care I put into my role at home. He criticized my cooking and suggested I take lessons from his mother, implying her skills were vastly superior. This comparison to his mother, a recurring theme in his critiques, deeply hurt me. He then demanded I go out and buy something for him to eat, ignoring the fact that it was already late and I had settled in for the night. Faced with his anger and unreasonable demands, I felt an overwhelming sense of dismay. When I hesitated, pointing out the impracticality of his request, Mark's patience snapped. 
he reminded me of my previous oversights, like forgetting to buy beer, and declared his intention to return to his parents' house out of frustration, leaving me alone. His departure, though abrupt, brought an unexpected relief. However, the next day, this brief respite was shattered by a call from Mark's mother, chastising me for not preparing a meal for her son. Her accusation of what she deemed as near-moral harassment was difficult to hear. I attempted to explain the situation, but faced with her unwavering stance, I ended the conversation with an apology, feeling disheartened. With Mark away, I allowed myself a leisurely late brunch, a small act of self-care amid the turmoil. Yet the prospect of his return loomed over me, tinted with the anticipation of further conflict. Determined to bridge the gap, I resolved to make an exceptional dinner that evening. I shopped with care, selecting ingredients for a special meal, and ensuring to include Mark's preferred beer, aiming to mend fences through a gesture of goodwill. I shortened my daily blogging ritual to dedicate more time to cooking, pouring my effort into preparing a meal that would surpass Mark's expectations. The table was set meticulously, reflecting both my dedication and a hopeful step towards reconciliation. As I surveyed the scene, a sense of accomplishment washed over me. In this effort, I found not only a means to potentially appease Mark, but also a moment of self-validation. I hoped that this dinner, a symbol of my effort and care, would be met with appreciation, marking a step towards understanding and mutual respect. I waited for Mark in the dining room, but he didn't come home. I tried calling him many times on my phone, but got no answer, which made me worry. Hours passed, and I thought maybe he went to his parents' house. They hadn't seen him either, it was getting late and I was about to call the police when Mark finally came home, very drunk. He fell in the hallway, and when I went to help, he yelled at me to go away and not to touch him. He insulted me, and it hurt a lot. I couldn't understand why he couldn't be kinder. I had made dinner with so much care, but it was all wasted. I ended up eating alone, feeling very sad. The next morning, Mark acted like nothing happened. He complained about his headache and questioned why I left him in the hallway. I reminded him that he chose to lie there. He seemed to think it was my job to look after him, even when he was drunk, and hadn't told me he wouldn't be home for dinner. He said his plans changed last minute and didn't think he needed to tell me. His excuses made me feel even more distant from him. I decided I needed a break and planned to go to my parents' house the next day. Being around Mark had become hard and unenjoyable. His lack of respect made me think about divorce, especially with our baby on the way. I was excited about the baby but sad about our relationship. I've heard from friends that giving birth can be tough, but I'm more excited than worried about meeting my baby. My neighbors cheer me up by saying it won't be long now. One day, Mark mentioned his parents wanted us to go on a trip with them. This surprised me because Mark's parents and I don't always get along. They often take Mark's side in any disagreement. Mark insisted that being pregnant doesn't mean I can't travel and that everything was arranged for a short trip next week, which is close to my due date. I felt this was too much and tried to object, but Mark wouldn't listen. I talked to a friend about it, who agreed it was unreasonable. When the day to leave arrived, I said I wasn't feeling well and wanted to stay home, but Mark insisted I'd be fine in the car. As we were getting ready to leave, I realized my water had broken. I told Mark we needed to go to the hospital right away. He was surprised and then, strangely, he told me to get out of the car because I was making a mess. I couldn't believe he was more concerned about the car than getting me to the hospital. Mark told me to get out of the car because he needed to clean it. And then, shockingly, he pulled me out and drove off, saying I should go to the hospital by myself. I was too surprised to react. Quickly, I called for an ambulance, and that's when Sandra, a neighbor, came over and saw I was in trouble. She helped me get a special taxi to the hospital, comforting me on the way. I was thankful for her support and cried a bit from the relief of her kindness. 
As Sandra stayed with me at the hospital, I quietly promised myself that Mark would regret his actions. Sandra held my hand, keeping me calm until my parents arrived. They looked worried, and Sandra said she needed to talk to them about something. Then, I started having more intense labor pains. My phone rang, and it was Mark calling. My parents didn't look happy but handed me the phone. Mark sounded panicked, asking for help, but I couldn't deal with him right then and hung up. Despite turning off my phone, Mark kept sending messages. Eventually, I was taken to the delivery room, and after some time, I heard my baby crying. I was so tired but happy to see my parents and Sandra with me. After sleeping for a bit, I woke up in my hospital bed. My parents were there, looking concerned. I asked about the baby, and they said the baby was fine and would be back with me soon. Sandra had left, but I felt so grateful for her help. I promised my parents that things would change once we got home. I decided to visit Sandra later to thank her. When I turned on my phone, I saw a lot of missed calls from Mark, which surprised me, but I didn't feel any hope from them, so I just ignored them. A friend came to see me in the hospital to celebrate the birth of my baby. As we talked, I told her about what happened with Mark. She was shocked and even joked about wanting to scold him. She made sure I knew resting and my health were most important, then she left. My parents, already knowing the full story from Sandra, asked me what I planned to do next. I told them I was thinking about getting a divorce, and they supported my decision. I decided to stay with my parents after leaving the hospital. Mark tried to visit me at the hospital, but I had told the staff I didn't want to see him, so they didn't let him in. The next day, Sandra visited with a fruit basket. I was so happy to see her. She reminded me to take it easy because getting tired after having a baby is common. I thanked her a lot for her help and said I didn't know what I would have done without her. Sandra told me it was most important that me and the baby were healthy and she was glad to help. I promised to thank her properly once everything calmed down. Sandra mentioned she had told her husband about what happened and he was very upset. I felt bad for involving her in my problems. Then Sandra revealed something surprising, she was actually the wife of the CEO at the company where Mark works. We became neighbors when we first moved here. This made me realize just how much I had brought Sandra into this situation. I didn't know that Sandra was the CEO's wife. We met often at the local stores and started having tea together. That's how I learned about her husband's important job. My husband didn't know any of this because he never joined me in meeting our neighbors and didn't like to socialize. Sandra once asked me not to tell my husband about her identity because she didn't want to cause any trouble, and I agreed. With my difficult situation at home, Sandra offered to talk to her husband about it, but I didn't want to bother her. After what happened recently, it seems that Sandra decided she had to act, which is why my husband was trying to reach her. I'm really grateful to Sandra for her support. She told me I was a dear friend and she couldn't just watch me suffer. Even though my husband kept sending messages, I ignored them, focusing on my future with my baby. Just before leaving the hospital, a friend showed me a social media post about my situation. She has many followers and had shared a video someone took of me being yelled at by my husband when he made me get out of the car. My face was blurred for privacy, but the video got a lot of attention, and people figured out who my husband and his company were. Now he's facing a lot of criticism online. I was shocked to learn how much attention the situation with my husband had gotten online. My friend, seeing my surprise, simply said that my husband and his actions were his own doing. The story had spread so much that even my husband's friends knew about it. He tried to excuse his behavior by saying he had plans with his parents, which led to criticism of them too. Stories about my husband's parents started appearing online as well. Then, my mother-in-law called me. My friend suggested I should answer and speak my mind, but I was too overwhelmed and chose to ignore the call. Soon, my missed calls were full of attempts for my husband and his parents to reach me. The hospital staff knew about my situation and supported me, 
ensuring I wasn't disturbed by my husband or his parents. As my discharge day came, I worried about encountering my husband and his parents outside the hospital. My parents assured me there was nothing to worry about. On the day I was leaving, I heard my husband and in-laws calling out to me. Suddenly, men in black suits formed a barrier around me, making me feel safe. They were there to protect me on someone's orders, and my mom reassured me once more, saying I had nothing to fear. With their protection, my husband and his parents couldn't get close as I got into the car safely. I'm really thankful for Sandra's help and have been thinking about how to thank her properly. My parents agree and want to show our gratitude too. Even though I've started a new chapter and am enjoying better days, my husband and his parents keep trying to contact me. I sent them divorce papers, but they didn't seem ready to accept them. Once, when they called and spoke rudely to my dad, he got upset and they ended the call quickly. We decided to get help from a lawyer, who was a friend of my dad's. The lawyer was willing to help us after we told him about the situation and the video that was shared online. When the lawyer contacted my husband on our behalf, my husband was surprised and then stubborn, insisting we could solve our issues without a lawyer but the lawyer made it clear he was representing me, and it was my choice to involve him. My husband didn't want to agree to the divorce at first, but the mention of possibly going to court made him change his mind. He said he didn't care about our child and didn't see why he should pay child support or how we split our things, claiming he did nothing wrong. The lawyer explained the legal side, but my husband was still not convinced until the lawyer mentioned court which made my in-laws agree to the terms quickly. I was stunned by my husband's attitude and couldn't believe I had married him. I've been talking to Sandra about everything, and she jokingly suggested we could go after my ex-husband's retirement money as a way to get back at him. Sandra's cleverness really surprised me. The lawyer told me my husband wanted to say sorry in person, but I chose to talk over the phone with the lawyer there. My parents were with me when he called. He started by blaming me for everything, saying his life was falling apart and it was all my fault. He even asked me to come back to him, saying he'd forgive me. I stayed calm, and when he insulted me again, I told him we were recording the call to use as evidence. He was shocked and quickly changed his tune, claiming he was joking and couldn't live without me. I hung up and gave the recording to the lawyer, who couldn't believe my husband's behavior. My parents and I were sure we wanted nothing more to do with him. There was a strange part of me that found this situation slightly amusing. The divorce went smoothly, with no problems in dividing our property or arranging child support. Thanks to Sandra telling her husband, who is my ex-husband's boss, about what happened, he faced consequences at work. The boss values family and didn't take kindly to my ex-husband's actions. Mark couldn't keep his job after what happened. Without work, he couldn't pay for his house and had to move back in with his parents. The video that went around made it hard for him to get a good job, so he just did small jobs here and there. People also started talking about his parents, making them feel uncomfortable in their own community. This situation was tough for them, maybe even tougher than dealing with any legal trouble. After things calmed down and I was feeling better, my family and I went to thank Sandra and her husband. They were really kind to us, especially to my baby, making us feel welcome. Soon, Sandra and my mom became good friends, and our dads got along well too. Sandra and her husband have a son who is about my age, and surprisingly, we started getting closer. A few years later, it looked like I might become part of Sandra's family which was something nobody expected. Life can really surprise you sometimes.